Hello, this is David. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about a truck I've been working on for a little while now. Uh, it's a 2006 Ford F450. Originally had the 60 Power Stroke Diesel, 6 speed. Uh, this is a delivery truck for Virginia Custom Buildings and Play Centers. Uh, they deliver uh, storage sheds uh, with them. Pull about 30,000 pounds with them, roughly on a daily basis. Um, a year ago, I did a 12 valve come and swap on it. 60 diesel just would not hold up for us. And uh, I did the, like I said, I did this swap about a year ago. Uh, the motor that just came out of it had about 20,000 miles on it, and the driver wasn't paying attention and burned up the motor. Um, the 96 12 valve Cummins. Uh, he ended up cracking the number four piston, put two cracks in the head and the exhaust ports, bent one of the valves, and blew all the rings out of the block. And, you know, just completely ruined it. Uh, I'm supposed to have a new motor show up here today for it. And if I've got time, I'll go through it with you and everything. I'm having an industrial injection build the motor for me. And Hopefully it shows up today. Uh, there's just a few simple little tips and tricks I want to go over with you on uh, doing the come and swap in one of these trucks. Uh, the adapter kit that I used come from Diesel Conversion Specialties. Can't really see it too well. But uh, that's the adapter plate that mounts to the back of the 12 valve Cummins block to accept the 6 speed Ford transmission. Which it is a very well built adapter plate and it accepts the factory Ford starter and you use the factory Ford clutch which you have to have it's you have to have the flywheel specially made to where it's a dodge bolt pattern with the Ford starter ring and drilled and tapped for the Ford clutch kit which this is the clutch kit that's going behind the new motor it's a South Bend dual disc high performance clutch kit you know which uh, it, I was running the factory Ford clutch kit and it just doesn't last won't hold up to the weight that they pull with this truck so I'm going with the double disc this time and it should last, you know, two or three times longer. And it's made to where it'll take excess heat because uh, it has the uh, it has a billet center plate in it. You know, being that it's a dual disc, and the billet center plate is made to take the heat because um, we get a lot of heat in these clutches because uh, we do back these trucks into yards and stuff to set storage buildings and stuff with them. Here's the cab off of the truck. You know, like I said, it's a 2006 F450. You can see I've already got it badged with the Cummins and the Banks. Uh, it's got the big four inch Banks intercooler in it already, which did help quite a bit. Uh, had to go with that because the factory Ford intercooler would not take the boost pressure that the Cummins was producing and you can see here I blew the intake side off of it. Uh, one little tip on when you do the 12 valve Cummins swap in these trucks and especially if you use the diesel conversion uh, kit is the motor mounts are adjustable. There's three different locations they say you can put it in. In the forward location, uh, you can't run the factory forward, I mean the factory Dodge coolant fan due to clearance issues with the radiator. And as you can see, the motor mount, frame side mounts are slotted. So you can uh, position the motor where pretty much wherever you want to. Um, I'm using the central location so I do not have to cut and weld on my transmission cross member and it gives me just enough clearance to still run the stock cooling fan. One issue I've ran into 
is even in the central location where they say it will clear the radiator. Which here is the where is factory style fan for the 12 valve Cummins. Which can't really see it, but if you see right there where the bolts run through, I've got a washer. Really thin washer spacing the fan back away from the clutch giving a little bit extra room between the fan and radiator. And right here on this lip here it used to come out to a really sharp point and I've had to grind those off, well grind them off just to give me a little bit extra clearance and with the, which later on I'll show you after I get the motor in how much room I actually have. I really don't have much uh, but it's just enough. But you gotta watch what clutch you run on the fan. I've had three clutches separate and the fan get into the radiator and turn ends up with the radiator looking like this and you know destroys the radiator which you know the radiator is $189 at advance which ain't too bad you know but it's just kind of a pain in the butt to get out sometimes And another thing on the mounting the radiator to keep get you a little extra clearance. Let me see if I can find the radiator mounts. If you see the mounts, I have put the slots a little bit deeper in it so I can get the radiator back as back away from the fan as far as possible. Um, that's really all I can show you right now. I'm waiting for my new motor to come in. Uh, which should be sometime today and so my next video I'll show you the new motor and maybe I'll have it sitting in the frame I uh, will just see but anyway that's all I can do right now and uh, thank you very much